Hi everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. So today we are talking about the Butterbox Babies. It is a really different, well, I keep saying it every week, but this is really different. This is weird. This is like really murder, mystery, creepy, crime time vibe. Like, I don't know how to describe it other than let's just get into it. So in 1925, at the age of 26, a young lady named Lila met up with a man named William e. Peach Young and they got married in the same year, 1925, and they would go on to have five children in total. So William Young and now Lila Young were a very ambitious and religious couple. In 1928, when Lila was 29, she graduated from the National School of Obstetrics and Midwifery and, and William graduated from the National School of Chiropractic. So William, who was now 30, was an unordained minister and, and missionary of the Seventh-day Adventists. So like I said, the couple was really ambitious and together they opened a life and health sanatorium where, quote, the sick get well, end quote. So this place called the Life and Health Sanatorium was a four bedroom cottage in East Chester that they worked out of. And when they were working here, they barely made enough money here. They were struggling quite a bit, didn't have enough beds for the patients to sleep on. So while they were running the sanatorium, um, Lila delivered a lot of babies and she kind of figured out that there was quite a niche for this um, type of service. There were a lot of unwed women and they soon started delivering a lot of babies and within the year the young started i'm just going to call them the youngs they started specializing in maternity services for a lot of women and like i said a lot of these women were unwed and william would continue to work as a chiropractor but he also kind of ran the sanatorium like a director well they both did but, but as a side note chiropractors back in the day were not really taken that seriously which i find quite interesting um so a lot of the chiropractors, you know, back in Canada in 1925, I think I forgot to mention the stories in Canada, um, they were taken to prison because the, um, like, I think medical council, they just didn't believe that what they were doing was actual medical practice. So yeah, a lot of them were arrested. And then I kind of think to myself, but then, then why would a place offer to that kind of studies if they were just going to get arrested for it or if the medical board didn't see that that was a real you know thing to study it just doesn't make sense to me but anyway let's just get back to the story so after a little while the youngs decided to rebrand and they renamed the sanatorium as the ideal maternity home and sanatorium so i guess that this place was called the ideal home and it was ideal so a lot of women would go to this home and go on vacation and then come back home and not have a baby anymore and this would hopefully keep the women's reputations intact. For Canadian women at the time, abortions and birth control were illegal. So they had to find a way to do this stuff somehow. And unmarried women or unwed women were disowned by their families. There was no government support for any of the unwed women who got pregnant. And there was often no community support for the women who got pregnant. So Lila and William Young decided to post adverts in the local newspaper to help women to know about the place. And they would often say that they would promise them, shield the girls from gossip and to try and shield them from anything that negative that could ruin their reputations. So soon clients started flocking to the door and their average age was 17. The women were averagely 17 years old. And one of the adverts said, quote dang gossip has ruined many young lives and ruined them socially they may have been bright stars in society and a power in the world of usefulness had they been shielded from gossip when they made their mistake unquote the ideal maternity home offered complete adoptions and they also offered complete abortions which was obviously illegal the time at the time and they didn't advertise that and if anyone was caught doing that the doctors who would do it or even the nurses who would do that would end up with life in prison and this was obviously not advertised and it was mostly spread by word of mouth from other women so women on average at the ideal maternity home would pay an average of 75 dollars a week and they had to also pay for two weeks of recuperation like to heal and everything like that 
an unwed woman paid an average between $100 and $200 in advance to book a room, which included delivery and adoption and also everything to be arranged for them. But that's a lot of money, especially because the average wage in Canada back in the day was $8 a week. So imagine you have to pay $100 to $200 just to book to have your baby and then you're only earning like eight dollars and the ideal maternity home would also rake in money because they would charge twelve dollars for diapers so everything that you use they would charge oh you want that towel we're gonna charge oh you want that cream we're gonna charge so women giving birth at the ideal maternity home would often pay around three hundred dollars and if the baby died they would still have to pay twenty dollars for them to be buried but if these ladies didn't have any way to pay for this exorbitant amount that they had to um, do before delivery, the youngs would blackmail them and they would blackmail their families by either um, exposing the baby, by exposing the delivery, exposing the abortion, or just trying to blackmail their family in general. And obviously in this time, the woman wanted to keep these secret as possible. So they didn't want their secret of having a baby exposed and everything because that's the whole point of them going to the ideal home in the first place. So if the wo woman also had no families then that the youngs could blackmail, then they would have to work for the youngs as domestic help or nannies or something to be in in the same building as the young so that they could see that they were paying off their debts and because this was such a lot of money the women would often work there for years and not be able to leave so obviously unfortunately these women were not able to say or speak up about what the youngs were doing because if they had to do that like i said then it basically defeats the point of why they were there in the first place and it wasn't worth taking the risk for these women to speak up so if the women didn't want to pay everything they could just pay Lila and William $300, just give their baby up for adoption. Women would have their baby somewhere else and would just want to, you know, give their babies up for adoption and they would have to pay $300 to do this, which obviously the youngs loved because this was free money. They didn't have to go through the birthing process. They didn't have to deliver the babies. They would just get babies in for basically for free and the woman would pay them to take them for adoption which I don't think is normal. I think you don't pay to give your child up for adoption at all. So now William and Lila started noticing that they could get a lot of money for adoptions and obviously they wanted to amp this up. They wanted to get more babies in because they wanted to make more money. The youngs would keep babies that they thought were perfectly adoptable. So babies who were born with imperfections, who were born with birth defects or who were mixed race babies were not seen as marketable. And this isn't what I think. This is what Lila and William think. So, you know. So when L William and Lila thought that a baby was unmarketable, what they would do is they wouldn't want to waste money on the babies. So what they would do is they would just feed the baby molasses and water. And they didn't want to waste space on babies that they didn't think they could use as profit. So they would um, just starve them, like I said. And they would unfortunately only last about two weeks because they would die of starvation. Also, side note, I'm sorry it's so bright in here, but the sun, you know, decides to do its own thing and just pops in its rays right in my light, so rude. So, so sorry about that. But the show must continue. So obviously now the youngs had the problem of all these babies that they didn't want and that were dying. So what they would do is they would place these babies into wooden boxes that they would get from the local creamery. And on the boxes, it, was, it said butter boxes on the outside of the box. And this is what they would bury the babies in. So some of these women that were coming here to give birth, they would not know what was happening to these babies, but they were still forced to pay the $20 for burial of these babies. If the woman who gave birth to these babies could not afford to pay the $20, the babies would be cremated. That was too full. They would then take the babies out to a, f a local fisherman and he would take the babies out to sea and dump the bodies in the sea. Later on, a worker who worked around the property said that he helped the youngs bury around 150 babies. And he said that if they had struggled to get the, the butter boxes, then the babies would stay in a shed for up to five days sometimes before they could actually get a butter box for them to bury them in. So Lila was the main person who was delivering all these babies. And a lot of women from the sources said that she would be pretty rough with the women. So birth was obviously painful normally, but Lila would not 
there was no medicine there was no anesthetic so they would be in even more pain because she would just like try and get the babies out so from sources there was said to be a lady who came into the ideal maternity home who was an unmarried woman and she was obviously there to give birth she said that lila had helped her give birth to a baby girl and while she was lying there trying to recover because lila just it was incredibly painful. Lila walked in about an hour later and handed her her baby, which was like, here, feed. And then she took the baby away, hurriedly took her away, brought her back in about an hour later and said, sorry, ma'am, your baby's getting really sick. We just like gonna keep an eye on her, but I don't think she's gonna make it. And obviously this woman was like, what the hell? I just gave you my baby. I just fed the baby. So I, like she didn't, she didn't get it. She didn't compute which i understand you just saw your baby you just fed your baby and now she's telling you that your baby's like on her deathbed so anyway so lila leaves her doesn't say anything and then she comes in around another hour later and she says to this lady um unfortunately your baby's died and of course this lady she still doesn't believe lila she's in shock she's crying walks out of the room and leaves her and according to sources, there were a lot of rumors going around that there was a really wealthy couple coming in who wanted a baby girl. And the lady who just delivered that baby girl that day, that was the only baby girl that was in the home at the time. Suspicious much. So vacationers from New York go to Nova Scotia, which is where the ideal maternity home was in the summer. So both American and Canadian adoption agencies would require that babies would be replaced in the same religious background as their parents or the mother who gave birth to them. But of course, Lila and William had no problem breaking this rule. So basically they would say, you want a Jewish baby? Here's a Jewish baby. You want twins? Here's twins. Magically, babies would disappear of whatever you required. So William and Lila made a lot of money. Each adoption, they would make a thousand dollars and some babies were up to $5,000 each. So the little four bedroom cottage soon grew into a 54 room institution. They had 54 bedrooms, 14 bathrooms, multiple nurseries, and no mortgage. So between 1937 and 1947, the Youngs stacked up a staggering $3.5 million from their business. And business really boomed in World War II, because obviously you would have all these uh, young gentlemen coming in from different countries and, uh, yeah, and leaving the woman behind. So in 1945, a potential adoptive mother came into the institution to see you know she wants to adopt a baby so she came in there and she was shocked by the state that the babies were in she said that it was filthy there were about three babies per bed or per cot and there were flies swarming around them they were unchanged and they stank so you know at least there was one sensible woman but she did end up reporting this side note if the parents changed their mind and wanted their babies back Lida would charge them $10,000 and even if this couple ended up paying the $10,000 Lila would lie and say oh well the adoption has already taken place and she wouldn't give the money back or the baby. So the ideal maternity home had many supporters and people would often donate to the ideal maternity home. They would give them blankets, they would give them food for the babies and also money. And also in one of the campaigns that the Youngs had done, there was a picture of politician's daughter-in-law who had actually adopted a baby from the ideal home. So of course they looked great to the public. But of course, however, many people did not like the maternity home um, because a Dr. Frank Davis was appointed to the Office of Public Health because he had heard rumors about the dead babies and he had taken it upon himself to investigate these claims. So he kept an eye, a very, very close eye on the ideal maternity home. In 1945, Dr. Frank Davis reported that he had seen neglect from the ideal maternity home. The babies were very thin and he reported that they were a lot thinner than a normal child or baby would be at that age. Soon after Dr. Frank Davis had seen all of this, he was part of amending the Maternity Board House Act, which now put more requirements on people to be able to get these type of licenses, to do the adoptions, to do the boarding and to house women that are and as soon as the amendment was put in place, the ideal maternity home was shut down because they couldn't get that type of license because they didn't meet the requirements anymore to house these women and to do what they were doing. So 
it's not funny but lila thought that she was being harassed by everyone and so she tried to appeal the amendment and she also tried to just still operate without a license so lila and william were convicted violating the maternity board act and william was convicted of practicing medicine without a license but they were only fined 150 dollars remember these guys were millionaires that was nothing to them but Lila was still feeling like she was being harassed, especially by one of the newspapers who were reporting all of these things to the public and to the government. So she ended up filing a $25,000 lawsuit against the newspaper because they were spilling these beans and she did not like it. So the lawsuit that Lila had filed against the newspaper actually went to court. And unfortunately for Lila, or fortunately for everybody else, this exposed a lot of mistreatment that was happening in the ideal maternity home, which obviously backfired on them because the ideal maternity home soon closed their doors after the trial, for good. And according to the Youngs, they were now bankrupt. Where did $3.5 million go back in 1940, 1925, 1930? We don't know. I actually think they weren't bankrupt and it was probably just their business that was bankrupt. So they probably squirreled away their money somewhere and they were just filing bankruptcy for their business. But we don't know, I wasn't there, so. So in 1962, William died of cancer and in 1967, Lila died of leukemia. And she was buried in a field right next to where the Butterbox babies were buried, which I think is really sad, I mean. So the ideal maternity home was abandoned for quite some time and then in 1962, um, someone actually burnt down the ideal maternity home and they believed that it was arson. So there are some survivors of the Butterbox baby cases and they are still trying to find their biological parents. So if you're interested to read more about that, so I will link that in the description box below. There isn't a lot of information um, about this case, but obviously the information that there is out there is what we spoke about today. But this case was pretty messed up. I think it was really sad and I just, I don't know why people would want to do that. I don't understand why people have the heart to try and do that to babies and um, it's quite sad that they started out as trying to help women trying to be there for women who needed them the most and they ended up just greedy and just wanting that kind of money but other than that that is all i have here for you today i want to thank you so much for being here with me until this end and i hope you're staying safe i hope to see you again soon and please join me again next time bye